Good afternoon, everybody. It's me, Lisa Ng, here, um, painting away. It's Thursday, January 10th. I'm doing my weekly check-in here in the studio. Gorgeous day here in Toronto, Ontario. Um, updates are good news is that I sold a print off my sachiart.com page, a print of this painting called The Rose Room. I painted it a few years ago. Here's a picture of it. So it is kind of this creepy room of just roses wall to wall with a red light on the ceiling. And that's it, my print. And I'm so happy somebody bought it. Thanks so much to whoever bought it. And I also want to let you know I messed up a month ago. I basically saw lost like a $1,000 painting sale on my doggy underworld here. Because I listed the wrong measurements on the site, the buyer, I thought it was 48 by 36 inches, and then out of the blue, just like a week ago, I remeasured it. It's actually 40 by 30 inches. Oh, what a mistake on my part. I'm so sorry to whoever I did that to. I'm trying to track down this buyer, but I think he might have, he or she might have already bought something else. Anyway, lesson learned. Measure your artworks, list their correct dimensions on the websites. The good news is that the painting is still available right here, Doggy Underworld, and you can buy it on satchiart.com. And another update is that I've nearly finished my painting here of my giant orange chameleon that is sort of transparent and invisible she's looking super nice actually especially against this blue background anyway um i think i just want to add a few more details into the hardwood flooring here i want to put another shade of brown maybe a darker shade right now it's looking too too tone you can see hardwood flooring here in my apartment there's lots of shades of brown so I just want to add maybe one more shade. I added some clouds to this little blue ball here for the sky. And I'm really proud about the shadows I painted in the sky. So it's like a wall of sky and not really sky. And yeah, that's what I'm going to be up to. I might do another little shadow here because the light is actually behind the curtain. So it would actually cast a shadow of the curtain. So I might add that. We'll see. And that's what I'm going to be up to today. Um, I guess I could show you a little bit of my process. Let's see here. This is my color lab. So anytime I mix a color, this is my main colors. I have my primaries, my white, my yellow, magenta, which is red, and primary blue, black, white, one of these whites is a medium for thinning out colors and I'm working with a brown today so I think I actually have this is my regular brown and I have a pre-mixed brown here so I'll be working with these two I can clear up some space put that away we don't really need that right now this is a tissue <laughs> Um, so I have my rags here. Those are important for cleaning palette knives and whatnot. So I'm just gonna dive right in here and get right into it. Here we are. Let's start with this brown. Huh. do I need I also wanted my wrist brace actually because I don't want my carpal tunnel to get any worse this is the wrist brace I wear when I paint because I had some problems with carpal tunnel just doing too much little tiny hand movements that were causing pain in my these three fingers thumb index and middle finger that's what carpal tunnel generally affects, but if it gets really worse, it can affect your whole hand, and then eventually lose your whole use of your hand. But you can do it with regular, fix it with regular stretches, physiotherapy, massage therapy, all of which I've done, and it's mostly gone now, given that I wear my wrist brace. 
when I paint. I also wear it when I sleep too, just cause I wanna keep it, keep it away. This is my favorite palette knife. It's kinda got a bent in it. I see some scraps of paint. I'm actually gonna clean that off. I clean this off with scissors here. So I take the scissors and I basically just, I wish I had a dozen hands because it would be easier to show you. But I just kind of take the edge of the scissor here. Oh, this is terrible. And I just kind of scrape away. Well, I can't really tell, but hmm. Maybe if I went like this. I don't know if that helps. But that's what I'm doing. I'm scraping away the dry bits of paint off my palette knife. If you don't do this, it can leave tiny chunks of dried paint in your paint. And I like to keep the surface of my paintings flat. I know not everybody does, like Tom Thompson, whatever, group of seven. He liked to paint with really chunky paint to create textures on the canvas, which is pretty cool too. I don't have anything against it, but it's really not my style. I, I don't really... I think the strong point of my paintings isn't necessarily texture, but patterns, ideas I'm into, visual imagination is what I'm into over textures. I like creating visual textures. Look at that. Doesn't that look nice? The camera on this phone is amazing. Look how clear those scales are. Huh. And I did go in there and paint tiny little, you see those little orange dots to make that pattern of the carpet versus it being like a flat texture of the couch there. Anyway, back to the browns. Here we are. I'm actually going to dive into my pure brown. <laughs> Where is it actually? This is weird to do while you're talking. And being the host of your own show, and here it is. This is my little cubby of paints. Every painter needs a little cubby of paints. Okay, now we're in business. I actually don't really need the primers right now, so I'll put those away. Give myself a little more space. I'm gonna open up this brown. This brown, you can mix it yourself to mix brown, pretty obvious. You just take all three primaries, blue, yellow, red, and mix it all together. But for me, to make my life easier, I actually just buy the brown. It's one of the rare colors I buy. That and a blood red, also known as Napoleon red or Napo red or whatever. I can't seem to mix the color of blood red for some reason. That's what I figured out during my cannibal phase. Anyway. So this is a pre-mixed brown, and then I'm gonna dive into this brown that already has a little white in it, cause I don't want a pure brown. I kinda want a mid-range brown. This is my palette, paint palette. I used to spend money buying those disposable palettes that they teach you to get in art school, but what they don't tell you in art school is that some people don't make any money off their art. So it's important to find thrifty ways to, you know, sustain your practice. And one of the ways I found is to just use these free pizza flyers that Canada Post delivers to me on a weekly basis. And because they have this kind of waxy coating, the material, it's really great for mixing paints on. Like it doesn't absorb the paint at all. See, now I want to see how dark of a brown do I want. I think I want a darker brown. So instead of contaminating my pure brown jar here, I'm going to look for my other palette knife. Here we are, and I'm gonna go in there. I'm also, I might need to, yeah, this is almost done, which is good. I actually, this comes out of a bottle when you buy it, but I just squirted it in this jar because I was traveling at the time and didn't want to bring the whole bottle. So it's good if I clean out this whole jar of brown here. All right, back to mixing. This is so hard to do kind of while you're holding a camera. All right, this video is almost 10 minutes. So it will take some time to upload. But anyway, at least you get a nice process of my online or whatever. 
Let's see how this brown compares. I'm pretty happy with this brown. It kind of brings it darker and it will also dry darker. That's another word of advice. Anytime you mix a color, it always dries just a wee bit darker. It's just good to know if you're trying to color match or something. And what kind of brush? I want a kind of a tiny-ish brush to paint. To paint with your brush, you want to dip it in water first to kind of wet the bristles, get the air little pockets and bubbles out before you go right in there. And away you go, because I'm right-handed for the most part, although I can paint with my left hand also. So, um, but today I'm going to paint with my right hand, so I like to paint from left to right, so your hand, you know, you're going this way, so the, the base of your hand isn't smushing up the wet paint that you've just applied. So let's find out if this is a good shade. Oh, perfect. Perfect shade of brown, look at that. Almost seamless. Not too light, not too dark. It's gonna add some really nice hardwood flooring texture to the painting. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna need a cameraman. Look at that. I'm pretty happy with that, that, with that. That's going to be really fun to paint. And it's going to look great. I'm going to cover the all the wood flooring of that. So that's a nice brown. Pretty happy with it. So I'm going to actually close my jars so they don't dry out. When I started painting, I used to throw out so much paint. I'm kind of ashamed about it, but I did figure out new ways to save on paint, which is to mix colors, and if you have leftovers, you keep them in little jars, and you can use them for later. Oh, look at that. That's really nice. It's really making the floors look a little more rich. In brown. If you're wondering what I'm listening to here, this is on my Spotify. I don't know what artist is specifically. It's just kind of a mix of recommended music. I'm really into using my Spotify. I'm not a fan of mainstream radio just because of all the stuff they can't play or they won't play. And I really get sick of the top 40 stuff really fast. Prior to painting, my first job actually was working at a home since. I was a towel folder. I hated that job and I was so awful at it. Actually, it wasn't awful, but I know my manager didn't like me because I wasn't passionate about folding towels and she'd like pull me aside and tell me to smile more and pick up my feet and all that jazz. But I guess my heart just wasn't in retail. And that job didn't really pay me enough to really put up with it. So I, anyway, what was I doing going? Oh, so I worked in home sets and they used to always play top 40 radio. So it was like six hours of nonstop top 40 radio. And I would get sick of it fast. And around Christmas time, they'd play the same darn Christmas songs for like four months. <laughs> now my job's better. Now my day job is a home care nurse, which is nice because I get to go in my little cushy car and I have, I get to pick my own music that I listen to in my car, which is wonderful. Because you go from house to house or apartment or homeless shelter and you see a client and then I get to hop back in my car and listen to another good song while I'm driving to my next client. So it actually works out for me. I like to have that break. My music break is so important to me, which is probably why I like painting so much because when I paint, I get to pick my own music. It's just a great excuse to listen to music. I don't know if it's more like music therapy or what. But this is here, it's looking nice. Oh yeah, it's looking really great. I'm pretty happy with this painting so far. I think I could probably declare it done and no one would really care or notice, but to me, I notice, and it's like the difference between a good painting and a really great painting. And I always like to aim for the really great painting. 
Although I do have some ideas for the next painting I want to paint already. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that nice? I wonder, I don't know how many hours I spent on this painting. I probably started it in when? Definitely before Christmas. Actually, maybe at the beginning of autumn, I think I started this painting. Yes, I remember now, because the leaves were turning orange and I was using a lot of orange. So it took me a good season and I paint, I don't know, some days I paint three hours, some days I paint probably six or eight hours. So they take a long time, which is why it annoys me when people ask for discounts or whatnot. But I know people do that. It's just like common practice in the art world. I don't know why. What else can I bitch about in the art world? Oh, submission fees. I've actually stopped applying to shows that contain a lot of submission fees and entrance fees. Every week somebody somewhere emails me and is like, oh, you should totally apply to this and that, but it's gonna cost you this and that. And it's like, I never win the art prize. It cost me money to put the application together. I know they say, oh, well you have to pay because it costs the time jurors to decide which art they want to pick, but to be fair, it cost me twice as much time putting your application together, naming the files, uploading everything, you know, and that takes me time. And, you know, in my day job, I get paid, I don't know, twenty seven fifty an hour to put up with the shit. I'd just rather do that than to give somebody else money to decide whether or not my art is good enough. But, you know, if it's, I guess I'll still consider it if I think it's a good deal. I mean, never say never to an opportunity, right? So I do appreciate everybody, you know, who reaches out to me, but don't take it personally if I don't take your advice all the time. So far, the best thing for me has been selling art online because that doesn't cost me any money and it doesn't cost me any time. And I know it's going directly to the buyer and I don't have to worry too much about paying fees, losing money. I don't like to lose money. I don't think anybody with any profession likes to lose money. So I really, I'm really thankful to everybody who's reached out and bought stuff online and gave me no hassles. Very thankful. I think that's the way to go because also anyone can upload art. So you kind of take the leadicism out of the art world and you know, I mean, there's only like what? few small handful of dealers in Toronto, none of which have taken me on. And um, they decide what gets shown in the galleries or whatever, and nobody has chosen me, but obviously the public likes me because I get these emails, I make sales online, so you know, there's a market for me. and. And that's okay, if the support's not here, that's fine. I just go elsewhere, you know, don't take it personally. Oh, look at that, that's looking great. Painting is lovely, but it can be deathly lonesome. Many artists I've found have gone crazy because they've worked in isolation. And I think that humans are just naturally social creatures. I mean, humans survive because they have families and they live in groups and they divide and conquer the amounts of work. And they help each other out. And, um... Which is why I kind of like to make these videos and I talk to myself here and someone might watch it and someone might not. But I do know that somebody somewhere is waiting for me to finish this painting. So it is some kind of social interaction, but it's definitely not immediate like my day job. My day job is 
Hello, my name's Lisa. I'm the nurse. I'm coming over. And when I get there, where's your supplies? Where's the chart? Hope you feel better. Bye-bye. And I get to talk to people. So I guess I'll leave that there for now. This video is 20 minutes long. So that's a pretty longish video. It's going to take a while to upload. Thanks for watching. If there are more things you want to know about me or my art or my stuff, just shoot me an email and ask me or make a comment. My email is lisangart at hotmail.com. But please don't e abuse that email address. I don't want your junk mail. I'm not looking for a date. <laughs> Uh, but definitely shoot me an email if you're interested in my artwork or have questions about it. And I hope you have a lovely day and the rest of the week. See you later.